my dear students this is shilpi saxena welcome to my channel learning hub so today i am going to start with another video of ai project cycle in which i will be covering uh, four w's of problem scoping this is the last part of this stage that is stage 2 then we will move ahead with uh, different data type data types of data so we will start with problem scoping now so four w's what are these four w it is very important part of this problem scoping when you want to identify the problem you should know the four w's that is four questions you should able to answer who what where and why who means who are the stakeholders means who are the persons who are involved with the problem it may be the owner of the company who has given you the task to identify the problem to solve the problem or it may be the person who is directly involved with the problem so uh, the stakeholders is not necessarily the person who is the owner of company or who has given you the task to do to uh, to rectify some problem okay so uh, who may, may have stakeholders that can be the direct labor who is dealing with the problem it may be the hr representatives it may be the customer care representatives it may be the officers who are dealing with the problem day by day okay so if you know the who who are the stakeholders in that case you will be able to identify the problem by talking to them by interacting with them to know what is the actual problem okay so what is the problem means what the actual problem is so by communicating by interviews by questionnaires you will know about the problem what is the actual problem then comes where where means what is where the problem exist basically where the problem exist the location of the problem or what is the situation in which the stakeholder is facing this problem or what what or location means whether it is in house or it is external problem for example suppose the production is not um, they are not achieve they are not uh, able to achieve the target the production is going low day by day in any company in that case the production the reduction in production can be due to the speed of machine can be due to some other problem internal problems also or it may be due to external problem that is they may not get the proper raw material on time so that the problem is now the external problem not the internal problem so we have to identify the location of the problem also then the last w is why that is why this problem why we need to solve this problem who will be benefited when we will solve this problem then why we need to solve this problem what will be the benefit of solving solving this problem so if you are able to uh, know four question if you were able to answer four question then the program uh, problem scoping is successful next comes data acquisition that is third stage of ai project cycle data acquisition is basically acquiring the data collecting the data or uh, then establishing connecting connection to the data sources okay so this data can be see the data is the raw facts and figures theek hai even it is processed it is converted to information okay so when we are collecting the data we should know the sources of data there can be three kinds of sources primary source secondary source and tertiary source primary source is that source of data which is direct suppose i have explained my uh, i have explained some con concept to student 1 okay that student 1 for him i am the primary source of data because whatever uh, i know i am explaining it directly okay now student 1 has explained the same concept to student 2 now we can't say that uh, to what student 1 understood when i was explaining him what he communicated to the student 2 whether the communication was proper or not whether he was able to ident uh, interpret what i was trying to explain so that is the secondary source the means i am explaining to one of my student and my student is explaining to another student so this is the secondary source of data now the secondary source of data is less reliable as compared to primary source primary source is considered to be the direct source and the most reliable source of data then comes ternary source ternary source is the third source 
uh, for example suppose uh, one incidents happened and uh, reporter went there to uh, to know what ha actually happened okay he communicated with the pupil whatever pupil told he was not present there at that time of his, at the time of incident so he has to believe on what the public was saying so he interpreted what he understood with the, uh, how that incident happened he will communicate the same thing to the editor we can't say what editor understood and what he framed what the story was what story was published so ternary source is the least reliable source that is in the magazine that is in the newspaper so we cannot rely on that because maybe the in some other uh, due to some other reason incident may happen and the communication gap will re uh, will result in the incorrect data so we cannot rely on whatever is there in the newspaper or whatever is there in the uh, on the in the magazine because it is a ternary it's not direct source okay now the next thing is types of data types of data you can see here the chart i have drawn that there are three types of data basic structure and other other data this is further divided into sub categories the first one is basic data basic data is divided into two categories that is numerical and textual you can see here uh, this is numerical and numerical data first of all numeric data is another again classified into discrete and continuous numeric data is the data that is in numbers that is 0 1 2 2.5 6.5 that is basically the digits is numerical data and textual data is the character data maybe symbols maybe characters it's textual data now numeric data is further divided into discrete and continuous discrete data is that data which is in whole number for example number of chairs number of students in the class number of employees in the company it can be 100 it can be 200 it cannot be 100.5 continuous data weight of the student size uh, length of uh, length of uh, suppose suppose cloth distance traveled that can be 2.5 3.5 6.5 kilometer anything okay so this type of data is continuous data then another classification is structured unstructured and uh, semi-structured data St based on structure there are there are three classifications structured semi-structured and unstructured structured data is that type of data which is organized properly may it be your report card may it be the employee record may it be the student record so that is in the organized form that is stored in the organized form that is structured data unstructured data that is not at all organized this is not at all organized like the the music file like the video file like the medical records medical records basically the the medical uh, checkup reports they are dumping the reports it is it is not organized in a proper way okay so that is unstructured data fine now uh, semi structured is a combination of both structured and unstructured when we are giving labels to the unstructured data some kind of tags are given it becomes semi structured for example suppose i have a folder of uh, uh, music files okay i will keep it in different different folder according to the according to the singer okay then it is semi structured data because that unstructured data i have kept in kept in different folders i have given the tag to the folder i have renamed the folder with the name of singer okay so that is semi structured data now the other classification is first one is time stamp data time stamp data is the data in which time is involved like uh, uh, phone calls okay when you are calling someone the time of start of call and time of end of call is noted down okay when you will take out the record call history you will see the time of call and number of uh, the and the minutes how many minutes you have uh, you, you have communicated okay so the data where the time is involved is known as timestamp data then comes machine data that is generated by the machine okay that is generated by the machine <clears throat> for example 
you must have seen the punching system in your school teachers when teachers come to school they usually they they are there is a system of biometric punching maybe the finger punching maybe the card punching so when they will punch the time uh, the date and time is noted down at what time she entered the class and what time she left the sorry what time she entered the school and um, what time she left the school at the end of the month the per the data is taken out based on the data salary is calculated suppose i don't go to school so obviously if my punching will not be done i will be marked absent so for that day my salary will be deducted okay so this type of data generated by the machine is machine data then comes spatio temporal data in which the location is involved you have must have seen google photos so when you will click the photo the location is uh, written there where the photo was clicked that is spatio temporal data for example when uh, say cbse when we conduct cbse practical examination of 12th standard we, it is mandatory to click the photo geotag photo if you have heard about it geotag photo is that photo in which location is there the latitude the longitude is there so it is mandatory for us to click the photograph of all the students along with the internal examiner <coughs> and the external examiner and we have to upload it on the uh, website with the marks so so that it is clear that i have conducted the practical examination okay the next one is open data open data is the data that is open for all like the websites whatever is there on the website you can uh, you can copy it you can read it okay you can use the data which you don't have to pay for it that is open data then the real time data real time data is data which is generated at the time of event at that particular event at which the uh, the event has occurred this is very crucial data uh, for example like we can if we talk about olympics okay you if you have seen the racing if you have seen the swimming competitions where you can see the milliseconds uh, milli milliseconds uh, are also measured so that data is known as real time data then comes big data big data see machine learning works completely on big data it collects the big data is that data which is generated automatically theek okay? hai we don't have to collect the data we don't have to save the data whatever we are doing based on that the big data is the that data is captured for example when we uh, visit social networking site you must have seen facebook if you watch one particular kind of video you will get suggestion how you are getting suggestion because that data whatever you have clicked that is captured that is generated automatically okay now next one is the uh, e-commerce website when suppose uh, i have clicked sarees on sarees okay once on sarees so next time when i will open amazon when i will open a flipkart we will see that uh, the suggestions are there how you are getting those suggestion because based on my previous surfing whatever i was doing previously it will give suggestions okay so this data is generated automatically when we are doing something on the web the digital footprints are captured and the data is collected from the environment the features of big data it is very important topic the big data is very very important please make sure that you read nicely about it so big the basic features of big data is that it is continuously created continuously created as i told you that as whatever we are doing that data is captured so it is created continuously and it captures all type of data may it be structured may it be unstructured may it be semi structured it is calculated from various sources various sources means it can be any kind of source primary secondary tertiary or different sources okay the size is huge this size varies from terabytes to zettabytes the then comes importance of big data machine learning depends on big data why it is important because as i already told you machine learning totally depends on data that is the big data be whatever data it is collecting it will manipulate that data and give the decision and give the result okay it helps in pattern identification pattern identification for example suppose i clicked on saree that that is whatever we are clicking based on that the next suggestion is given okay so this is this they are identifying the pattern whatever we are liking 
helps in prediction obviously they are predicting that you are going to purchase that particular product okay so if by chance i feel ki okay that this sari is good i'll purchase it okay now what will happen that they are achieving their goal of uh, se selling the items okay now can suggest various approaches to the same problem if there is one problem so big data is helpful for giving different solutions to the same problem so this finishes our type data categorizations if you like this video please like and subscribe hit the bell icon thank you and have a nice day ahead